Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another episode of In the Clouds. Today, I am joined by two fellow Red Hatters, Coco, I can't say your last name, so I'm not going to That's okay, it. Coco Janicki. <laughs> Coco Janicki. And... One too many bells, I know. Yeah, it's, sorry, my, my Southern education is coming out. Um, <laughs> and then... Anne, how are you? How are you today? And, I'm like, doing good. Thanks for having. Hi, thanks for having us. No problem. So, please introduce yourselves. Kind of tell us what your your what you do here at Red Hat. Uh, everybody knows what I do at Red Hat. I do this, uh, so I, I don't need to introduce myself. But feel free to introduce. All right, I'm Coco Janicki, as we've just established, and I occasionally do this, but I am also. Um, a director of product um, marketing in the cloud services group. And I think we're going to be talking a little bit about the cloud today. Mm -hmm. I hear the cloud's big. The, the, the cloud. Yeah, it's a thing. Um, and what do you do here? at a uh, So I'm, I'm Anne Louise Tangere and uh, I work in the portfolio lifecycle management team. And that's a combination of program managers and something we call product experience engineers and the uh, customer product managers and what the customer product managers and the product experience engineers bring to the table together with program management is a holistic view of uh, cradle to grave if we look at it from a, a product or service perspective. So the program managers help with launching and making releases available and the others help with uh, customer escalations and, and making sure that life cycles, et cetera, works well. Awesome. Fantastic. So I have a very important question to ask both of you. Super important. Is cheesecake a cake or a pie? And there's no wrong answer. That's the best part of this question. Anne, Anne Louise, what do you think? Oh, I've been debating whether this one. I, 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 would, I think I have to say cake. Fair um, enough. It's in the name. So, right? uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Coco? I, I'm torn. I have an engineering background, so I look at the crust and the filling mm -hmm. and the pie, but now that I've migrated to the dark side of marketing, I'm thinking of taxonomy, and if it's called a cake, we know it a cake. I think we have to call it a cake. We have to call it a cake. That's fair. Um, and I guess it depends on if it's, you know, a certain flavor, if it adds fruit, that kind of thing. So there's, like I said, there's no wrong answer. So thank you for that. Um, so Coco, why... Red Hat, why are we offering cloud service solutions out here? Like, why well, did we start here? What's the advantage? Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, this cloud thing yeah, looks like it may be off, here to huh? stay. You know, uh, the cloud is big, um, kind of like that internet thing a few years before that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we all remember that. Um, and there's, it, it makes sense to move things to the cloud. Why? manage all of your stuff, host all your stuff, manage infrastructure if that's not your core business. People want to spend time focusing on their business, building the business applications and outsource um, as much else as they can, have the experts on infrastructure manage the infrastructure. I think that totally makes sense. Um, you know, it's a time saving, it's a cost saving and all of that. But what we realize, and I think a lot of enterprises realize, it's not as simple as, well, what we used to do here, we're now going to do there. We'll just do this. It's not that simple. Uh, you've got security. You've got uh, latency. You've got, G. a lot of clouds out there. How do they connect together? Um, and there are many, many issues. And it became a very, very complex uh, world when you start looking at hybrid environments. And Red Hat is uniquely positioned to appreciate that. Um, as a company, we've always been vendor neutral. Uh, people like to say we're the Switzerland of technology. And so we appreciate hybrid pretty much everything, hybrid anything, including hybrid cloud. And with our background uh, with Linux and OpenShift and containers and Kubernetes, we really do understand the platform level of building applications. And so it was a very natural thing for us to really look at what does it mean to have a platform across a hybrid cloud environment. Um, we understand that. And so we want to be able to uh, create that experience. Uh, we, and we have the background to, in order to do that. And as we look at the platform, great Linux containers, that's a part of it. But as you 
spend a little bit more time looking at the entire application and building the application. What does it mean to have services that help you build application services, have these data services to help you put business applications together? And the more we looked into this, the more we got rather opinionated. Um, and we've, we've actually chosen that word. I'm a taxonomy person, I guess, today. Uh, chosen that word very deliberately yeah. um, that there are right and wrong ways of doing it. Not wrong ways, but there are efficient ways and less efficient ways of mm -hmm. doing it. So we have started uh, by adding to our platform uh, portfolio um, a set of data and application services that work very, very tightly with the platform that we already have to help people build and deploy, uh, and then of course, uh, maintain and move forward applications across hybrid cloud environments. That's awesome. I think that our expertise here are incredibly valuable um, because we've seen a lot being Red Hat and we've seen how folks want to use uh, their local environment, their cloud environments, all the environments that they have to the fullest extent possible. So where are things like Apache Kafka and, and that large scale data processing heading, right? Like, is everybody gonna stand up their own like massive data pipeline of some sort? Or do you see folks kind of leaning on other services and saying, hey, you know, we're, we're not the data science company, we're the widget company. So maybe we should get some outside help. Right. Um, so when you started asking that question, I started feeling like, well, a little bit of both. But mm -hmm. uh, the uh, when you started talking about Kafka and the importance of having fat pipes of data, I do think that everybody is going to realize that they need fat pipes of data because there is a lot of data. By the way, yeah. data is also big, <laughs> like yes. the internet and the cloud, yes. data is big. We, we just had the data scientist on earlier. So yes, data is huge. Exactly, <laughs> it's, it's big. Um, but then as you, as you sort of got your question a little bit more sophisticated, started talking about, well, who's gonna stand this up and, and who's going to make it possible? That is, a, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, falls out of people's core competencies. Mm -hmm. If they're a widget vendor, you know, chances are they're not a Kafka expert. Um, they may want a little bit of help. And Kafka, right. as I, most people probably know, is the hot new shiny bauble. It's the cool, cool open source project. Um, but it's not, it's not simple. It's, no, um, it is. It, it's a sophisticated part of moving data around. Mm -hmm. And uh, Red Hat has spent a lot of time understanding Kafka and not only how to use Kafka, but how to stand it up. How do you manage it? How do you maintain this fat pipe of data? Uh, that's where we're experts. So we, that's why we're offering this as a service. Um, yes, anybody can go to the Apache Kafka site, download Kafka, do it on their own. Yeah. And after you've built a, <laughs> built a team to do that, maybe in six <laughs> months, you can get started building your applications. Right. Um, you know, I think a lot of, when people think of the cloud, they think more of on demand, what I want, what I need, it's just there on a silver platter. And so that's why we're offering um, Red Hat OpenShift streams for Apache Kafka. I know it's a mouthful, um, but lawyers require that. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the service. Um, people can try it today, actually. Uh, we have a free trial running. Um, uh, to do that for them and then build it into the application. And the way we're doing it, because we also have a firm belief that when you build applications, it's very important to have uh, not just a lot of little point solutions, and then you have to go build your platform, is that the platform for building and delivering applications um, needs to be thought through. Um, it needs to be unified. It needs to have a streamlined experience uh, so that literally you can get started tomorrow if you want to. You don't have to spend however many months making decisions and putting it together. So we have, when we offer our Kafka service, it works very tightly with OpenShift, which by the way, is just, uh, it, it has support for hybrid cloud underneath just built in. And so we build off of this platform that makes it all very, very simple. And it's all glued together in advance. We 
um, really think through the end-to-end -end experience every time we add a new service to the family so that it just works. And I used the word opinionated before, we, we do that too. There are many ways that you can build your platform, many ways you can configure Kafka, um, but also API management and your containers. And there are many complicated ways of doing it, or you can let us do that for you. We, we just make it simpler. Um, you know, we have experience in this, we put it on a silver platter for you. So yeah, that's my, no, that's, my rather long-winded answer to your question. I would much rather have a service given to me on a silver platter and then have to try and figure it out and build it myself, to be honest. I mean, these days it's, it's figuring out the next thing all the time. It feels like in yep. technology. And, so, and because the, more... the transition to the cloud is complicated, mm -hmm. we can build that in. Um, yeah. We're really experts at hybrid cloud. So when we put together an application development platform or approach, it's got the expertise of how you deal with hybrid cloud built in. That, that's our, our uh, what, that's the why Red Hat um, answer. So, and Luis, we have a, this concept of repeatable onboarding of multiple services, ROMs, as we call it. What is it? You know, I, I see repeatable and I like it because repeatable is awesome in my world. Uh, the, like things don't happen by chance. I want them to happen intentionally in my environment, especially. Um, so what is this ROMs concept and how are we kind of pushing that along? So it's really a framework that we have created inside of products and technologies to help services uh, move faster into the cloud. As, as Coca just said, uh, we want to be there. We are the experts in getting this to the customers, but we also want to make sure that the experts are not bogged down by teaching others how to do it as well. So we want to create a framework that includes first the, the process steps, right? What kind of certifications do you need? What kind of help do you need? Uh, what, how do you build in security? How do you build in um, monitoring, logging, and all of these things? But people have never done services before. And how do you make this in a self-serve way so that other teams can come in and start building their services without having to tap the same experts again and again? So it's really teach the teacher, but also teach each other and create a framework of best practices, have a common place where uh, we have all of this together. So ROMS is really an effort to uh, crowdsource and, and lean into the Red Hat collaboration and transparency and build a community of not just one or two experts, but a community of experts that help each other with services. And that way we create services that will uh, have a good look and feel and feel like Red Hat. They will fit together. They will work in the hybrid cloud environment that is so important to us. And it will also lean in on reusing the on-premise or like traditional product uh, notions where we need to, but explain the new and the different things to the people who've never done it before. Yeah, I, it, I, I want, you know, it's, you mentioned a few things there, community. I think that's vitally important, right? Like the more we can do to build a community of people that are out there all trying to do the same thing, the better the whole industry will be, right? Like as, working together as opposed to against each other is always going to work better in the end um it's and this repeatable onboarding process i think is awesome because there's not an expertise level that's required it's kind of will bring you up to that level is what it sounds like who created it i mean did we create this internally like who was involved in that process so it's it's really created internally and okay. it was as i said a crowdsource so it was uh, people who knew about services, who had been done, doing services or releasing products in some forms got together across the organization. We had people uh, from every function represented. It was support was there, security was there, development was there, QE, everybody, program management. Mm -hmm. And together we sat down and we said, what do we need to do in order to create a, a framework that we can give to people and say, hey, this is how you find the best practices. This is how you do a service so that when you launch it, it can be successful and it fits into our hybrid framework. And uh, as and we rinse and repeat. So as we move forward with this, 
Some of the people come and go, but we make sure that we have uh, the right people involved all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we started this a couple, it's like probably in February, and we already started working on version six of it, which means that we iterate very often mm. and make sure that anybody who goes through the service is integrated into uh, the ROMS team and the community of practice that we've created. So we can keep tapping that feedback and the experience of going through it and keep making it better. Yeah, the, the feedback loop is what I'm most interested in, to be honest with you, because that's what's really going to shape the future, right? So how are you taking feedback in uh, and then applying that to the, to the cloud services as we go along here? I mean, is there a process to that or is it just, hey, I'm just going to open a GitHub issue or how does that work exactly? So we're doing it in multiple different ways. Uh, if you have a program manager assigned to uh, your service, then we mm -hmm. usually work with a program manager to have that as the focal point to gather the information. Uh, we are doing services where they don't have a program manager and we're trying to make a self-serve uh, process for them in a framework. In that case, it's the people who are the leads of ROMs that reach out to them or a part of the community or practice that we created around this that keep asking them for information. But we also, of course, have uh, an issue tracker where they can log issues as they do. And as we build this out and become more mature in how we're managing this process, we'll have better tools and ways of doing the feedback loop for this. Um, it's probably not the first thing you build up, but because you want to have that face-to-face -face interaction or that communication with the people going through. So you build the trust and you build the, the sense of community that they're not just using it, they have to give back because that's one of the senses of, of community for us. It's not just to take, you have to give back. Right. So if folks were looking for this community of practice, you know, to see what they were getting into before they kind of dive in, like feet first, where would they go to find that, I guess? So it's an internal to Red Hat thing. Okay. Uh, so Fair enough. this is not external. Um, we haven't thought about making it external and maybe we should. Uh, because I mean, yeah. anytime you pivot something, it's it's uh, a learning experience. And if you can tap into what other people succeeded with or mm -hmm. well, they can share their experience, it's, it's a gain, right? And giving back is what Red Hat does well. Yes, exactly. I think uh, it might be awesome uh, <laughs> if we open that community practice up a little to see, you know, how other folks are doing it. But you know, there's also the uh, Red Hat Accelerators program. Don't forget about those folks out there. Uh, not sure if you've tapped into that resource yet or not. Um, and if you're not familiar with that program, folks, let me drop a link for you. If I could type, typing is hard. Really hard. Um, so it is we've talked about ROMs, it's a framework, it's a process, it's kind of a checklist, it's a cohesive set of things. Um, what are the cloud services we're offering right now, like co across the board? I know it's more than Kafka. Um, I can answer that. Uh, yes, uh, Kafka is one of the ones that we're most excited about. Mm -hmm. um, we also have Red Hat OpenShift API management, which is a service for, this comes as a big surprise, managing APIs. Wow. Um, and those are two, the, the two of the first services that we're launching because we consider them very foundational. Mm -hmm. um, most enterprises that we work with are looking at uh, building applications with a microservices based mm -hmm. API first approach. And you really need API management in order to be successful. We consider that foundational. Uh, we've also learned that um, this is a service that people like to have in the same cluster because it, things work a lot faster. So it works very closely uh, with OpenShift. Um, and Kafka is also foundational because these large pipes of data can be used for a lot of different things. Um, you know, I'm sure you've heard of event-driven architecture, but mm -hmm. when you are building applications that have to talk between clouds, uh, connecting microservices can be a little bit hard. You don't want to hard code them together, um, tightly couple them because then you lose yeah. the agility 
that is why you went, people are moving to microservices in the first place. So people are using uh, data streams and Kafka to manage those streams uh, for event-driven architecture. So again, we consider that very foundational. Um, and we are also looking at other services that uh, fit well to support those services. So things like a service registry, connectors, Debezium, uh, these are all what we consider foundational. And it's very important to have this opinionated configuration uh, with, in, with respect with how it works with the rest of the platform. So, and then we also have, you're talking about data, uh, yeah. data science, Red Hat OpenShift data sciences. So that's yes. an AI ML uh, package uh, because people wanna build intelligence into their application. So again, it just makes sense for us to think of it as an extension of the platform. Yeah, that's a very valid point. It's, it's all kind of there for the taking, I feel like. Um, and when you say API management, what is act, like, what is that service doing for customers? It is managing the individual APIs. And um, so things like security, usage, uh, some mm. depending on your identity, you can access this, but you can't access that. Right. Um, right. Monitoring, why is this API being overused and this underused, things like that. Cool. Um, uh, and I had another point to make and I have forgotten it. That's okay. We can we can ask more questions and maybe it'll come back to you. Okay. So the 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 framework itself, what does that give us as Red Hat, right? Like it gives us the capability to make things repeatable, which is great for us because we know what we're kind of getting into in every situation. But you know, a lot of the work that is being done nowadays, like 80% of it is kind of gluing APIs together. The other 20% mm -hmm. is like actual business logic, it feels like. So we're doing this to help folks kind of tackle that 20% faster, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. And now I remember the point that I was making before is a lot of, uh, you know, one of the reasons why people are working so much with APIs is not, is also to keep the, keep services loosely coupled um, and, mm -hmm. you know, for agility, but also to monetize technology that companies already have. Um, I know there's sort of a quip out there that we don't make airplanes, we make software, we don't make cars, we make software. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of enterprises have pretty clever reusable technology that they want to monetize, make money on it. Slap an API on it, uh, you can monetize it. You know, you want to work more with partners, slap an API on it, manage that API. Uh, you know, you can extend your supply chain and your partner ecosystem easily and safely. So um, that's what people are doing. Awesome. So, I mean, I see the benefits of this, you know, because I read the stuff that we get internally here. What's in it for the customer? I mean, what is the customer experience like for them? Uh, for the cloud services, yes, faster time to market, faster time to market, and faster time to market. Hey, hey there you go. I think everybody wants that. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, it does kind of lift that burden off of you, right? Like yeah. you don't have to know what this really weird error in Kafka means, right? Like you just surface that and we'll, we'll, exactly. we'll look at it. Yeah. Administering this stuff is not easy. Um, yeah. And we do that. And it's also, it's a burden to keep things up to date. Um, yes. Open source projects rev frequently. And who's going to make sure that you always have uh, the latest and greatest? You, An enterprise can spend their precious resources and time worrying about that, or they can spend their precious time and resources on their business problems and let us take care of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, so we not only keep things up to date, but we also own the SLA. So we guarantee the uptime. Um, and that's actually a really large part of the value prop that yeah. no, our customers don't have to worry about keeping things up at three o'clock in the morning. We yeah. do that. So we have a 99.95% uptime guarantee. So wow. okay. we, we make, yeah. we make that our problem and we're good yeah, at like it. Trust me, I've tried to run Kafka at scale before, and I did not have that level of uptime. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice that there's an SLA behind it. I really appreciate that. Um, so all these, you know, all these services are here. They're all, you know, working together well with our customers. What kind of 
things get you up in the morning, right? Like, are there more services to come? Are there, you know, super things that you're excited about? You know, what, what gets you up in the morning? And this question is for both of you. So feel free and Louise to time, tap in here. And I think what I get the most excited about is seeing the pieces come together. Um, you know, Kafka is pretty neat and doing Kafka alone is a really fun, exciting thing. Mm -hmm. But I think an order of magnitude more exciting is when you think of Kafka as one of many pieces in a much larger approach to building applications. And to me, that's interesting, and especially mm -hmm. you throw in the, the complexities of hybrid cloud, um, yeah. then things start to get interesting. You know, you may have topics, uh, different clouds, some private, some public, some on the other side of the globe. Mm -hmm. How do you pull that together in a way that does not uh, threaten any of the agility of these groups in different buildings, different organizations, all working together? To me, that's a much more interesting part of, part of the puzzle. It is a puzzle, putting the pieces together. So that's what yeah. gets me excited in the morning. And Louise? What gets yeah, me well, <laughs> what gets me up? Uh, I, I say it's really participating in, in the ROMs effort has made me appreciate everything that is read at and it really gets me excited because when you we used to do products, we used to have different program teams and they were all sort of a little bit individual. They could all do it their own little way and they didn't really collaborate across the organization. And the, uh, the ability to work with so many different functions in uh, creating a new way of doing things. So I think about it as shifting from waterfall to agile, or mm -hmm. maybe from a functional programming to uh, object oriented. When you make big shifts like that, usually it takes a long time to do it. And we're trying to do it really quickly. We're shifting from doing on-premise to learning how to do services, but also combining them in a hybrid environment. And the excitement when you get together and you tap, as I said earlier, tapping into the core pieces of what Red Hat really is. It's a collaboration and then the transparency. Everybody's sharing everything. Uh, everybody's willing to help other people. And it just makes you feel like you're working for a great, uh, not an organization, but a great collection of people. You're not working for them. You're working with them. And that excitement and the momentum you get when you try something like that, it it just makes you feel really good about the work you're doing, the people you're working with. And so, it, yeah, it it's, makes me, as you say, very passionate. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, checking the thread or the stream here for questions. Not seeing any, just a lot of hellos. And how are you? So that's very nice. Thank you, everybody. Um, Diving back to the question sheet here. Do, 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 do. The what kind of what is on the roadmap that you can talk about right now? Is there any 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 new features? Like you mentioned, we're on version six now. What's coming in version seven? Do we have any idea of that? Uh, is that for Anne Louise to talk Could be about? Either one. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Who or about the products. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just curious what's next in the evolution of everything, right? Like, what what are some of the features we're looking to build in, you know, in the next version? Well, for ROMs, we're trying to um, just make it more self serve, but also, um, I got actually really triggered by your question: Is did we make this public? So I'm going to take that oh, one sorry. back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, because that that means that we can, if we can find pieces that we're doing, that we can share and make the community bigger. Mm -hmm. And then we can learn from others as well. Uh, we're not the only ones out in the industry doing this. No. Um, so I'm sure that there's plenty of sharing and learning that we can do together. Uh, so that to me gets gets me even more excited. And uh, But it, it's really... It's really getting into the fast iterations and, and making sure that we peel away the things that are taking time uh, without adding value and uh, not just slapping things on because somebody asked for it, but questioning everything we're doing all the time. So that's what we're going to continue to do to make it easier 
to do uh, the same thing as we want our customers to get to market faster. We want our internal services to get to market faster, which will benefit our customers too, because they will get access to them faster. So, and it's just getting that momentum and moving things forward. That's I think going forward. Awesome. So uh, I'm out of questions. I'll just say that up front. We have 30 minutes left. If we want, we, we can end early. Like I mentioned before, you know, it's no big deal. Is there anything else that you want to share about ROMs, cloud services, anything else? Right, right, folks, like take advantage of these services we're offering. I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot of ways for you to A, use the developer sandbox, add that, you know, open shift streams for Apache Kafka to it and like kick the tires on it and then, you know, figure out how you want to, you know, implement it in your organization. All that you can do for free, like the tire kicking is very, very possible to like manage all that for free. Um, and then you can apply what you've learned um, directly in your environment after, you know, testing those services. So what would you encourage folks to do next from here, right? Like, let's say they just watch this, you know, a week from now and where should they start their journey? Obviously, you know, I just dropped a Tri Kafka link in there. Oh, good. I think that's the, I think that's the best place to start. I but... think that's a wonderful place to start. Um, it's t completely cost-free. Um, mm -hmm. Don't take a credit card or anything. Um, you can just play. Yeah. Uh, we also have... <laughs> a trial for our API management service. It's actually built into the OpenShift dedicated trial, nice. um, which that's an option too. You have to bring your own cloud. So I would not say that it's free, but we don't charge any extra for right. um, the licenses for our software or anything like that. But certainly that's where I would start. Give it a try. Yeah. Especially if it's bringing your own cloud because you already got your governance and practices and everything already there. So. That's, right. That's a very nice feature. But you don't have to bring your cloud for Kafka because that's right. the service. Is... You can play in the sandbox. Yeah. Cool. So anything else? Anything else you want to share about what's going on out there in the managed services offering? No. When Get should we coming. look when should we look for something else? Is there a timeline on another managed service coming out at some point? Or is this where we're at and we're trying to figure out where to go next? Um, well, I can just do a quick recap. The API management service uh, is out. It's been GA for quite some time, mm -hmm. um, has a healthy roster of uh, customers. The Kafka service, which uh, is currently available for trial, we will start selling it uh, very shortly. Um, okay. So certainly you can start thinking about buying it, uh, buying it now. And uh, throughout the rest of this quarter, we will have be bringing the um, the, I call them the supportive services coming out too. So they're all kind of rolling out one at a time. And data science is going to GA um, within about a month, I think. So that's the timeline for nice. the next round. Cool. So lots of things rolling out in 2021. Good things are, some good things are happening. In some good things are happening <laughs> this year. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you both for coming on. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this after the fact, um, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about the topic. Uh, short at redhat.com, at Chris Short on Twitter. My DMs are open. Uh, and I can get your question answered via technical, via uh, you know services related. Just let me know. I can funnel that question whatever way it needs to go. Um, thank you so much. And Luis, Coco, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for see, having us. Thanks we'll for see, having us. We'll see y'all in two weeks on the next In the Clouds, where we'll be talking about Ansible Fest. Uh, Katie Piccarelli will be coming on to uh, discuss all the things that are Fest this year and how we're doing it in the, the new world that we're in right now. So I'm excited for it. Uh, Ansible Fest is one of my favorite events. So tune in next time. And later today on the channel, we'll have GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. And if you are not familiar with our streaming calendar, I dropped a link to it in chat. So you can be. Awesome. Thank you all and stay safe out there.